Coding made easy. So what's up everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp model game RPG tutorial. And this tutorial is going to be fairly short. We're just going to be saving the edited map that we have. And we'll get into some other stuff uh, later. I'm going to probably just make it uh, three or four more tutorials. So I uh, will do save um, content this tutorial, next tutorial load content. We'll add in layers, and then in the last tutorial, we'll add in like undo and redo functions, and that will be it. It's gonna be a very, 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 very basic time. I better than nothing, serious, nothing um, really in depth. And if you guys want to add in extra functionality, that's up to you guys. I'm just here to get you guys started. It's kind of like a side project from the initial RPG. So anyways, uh, what we're going to do is I want you to go to tile display and I think I already did this but um, just in case, I don't know if we got deleted or something but we want to have a default um, default constructor for tile display and one thing that uh, I don't remember who it was but somebody pointed this out to me. Um, I was treating uh, C Sharp kind of like C++, it, it kind of gets confusing and I've been calling ref um for a lot of my classes like even in our actual project i've been saying like ref player and ref uh layer and all those different things and i don't need it because the class itself a class is a reference type and so i don't need to pass reference to um actually do stuff with it so i want you to get rid of that um and then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our design our designer to view the code for a designer and we can get rid of the ref and that will be done and when we run our program you should see the exact same thing and don't worry about these warnings um but you, sh you should be able to see the exact same thing we can edit our map and yada 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 so what we want to do is actually see our designer and we're just going to make it a bit uh broader you know what we'll just leave it like that and we are going to use our toolbox and we are going to create a menu strip. Now, uh, for right now, we're just going to have file. We'll have um, something that says new map. Oh, yeah, maybe we have to have more tutorials um, just to like creating a new map. And well, whatever, we'll see. And we're just going to put a dash, and uh, the hyphen or the dash will create a line break. And then we'll just do save map, and we can put like save as or something. I don't know. Anyways, we're gonna double click on save map, and this is what's gonna happen when we click on our save map. But what we're gonna do is we're going to go to our layer class, and we are going to scroll to the bottom, and we're going to make a method called save. So what we want to do is we want to save our map file, right? Uh, the exact same way as we're going to actually load it into our game. So now the way we're drawing our maps is we're drawing it into, we've converted our map elements into, uh, into a tile map array that takes a bunch of vector twos, but we have to convert it back to this tile map instance and store it as in a row, a list of strings called row. And we already have our list right here. We have our um, our tile layout right here. And so what we're going to do in the save method, we're going to make a call to tile layout dot row, and we're just going to reset it. Just make it um, a new list. And then we're going to be doing a, uh, a for loop. So we're going to say tile map. We're going to do two for loops. So, uh, and in here we're going to say string row, or you can say temp row, whatever you want to call it. It's equal to empty, and we're going to have another nested for loop. It's going to say tile map i dot count, and you should all be familiar with this. Sorry for the typing errors. And, <coughs> sorry guys, I'm kind of sick, but we have, um, 
so yeah so we have our, our two dimensional array and so we're going to determine what goes into our row so we're going to say if tau map i j is equal to negative one or not and but or tau map oh, oh what is going on okay tau map i j is equal to negative one so if either one of them is equal to negative one then we're going to say oh it should be dot x dot x or you know what just to make it easier or well, actually never mind so we'll say if either one of them is set to negative one well most of that most times if one is set to negative one the other one's going to be set to negative one so if you want to make it easier you could say if tau map is ij is equal to negative vector 2.1 so it would look like this up to you whichever one you want to do it because um either either or will work and we'll say rows equal to x x and like that else we actually want to set the real row so it'll be the opening bracket plus tau map ij dot x to string plus we have the colon and we're going to add the y value And I hope you guys can see this. I think you can. Um, and that's all it's going to be. And so outside here, we're going to say tile layout dot row dot add. And we're just going to add in that row. And so that's going to add everything back to the default value. So that when we actually call the serializer, it will serialize it properly. So now what we want to do is we want to go to the map class and we want to create a new method and guess what we're going to call it save and uh, but this save method is going to have a parameter and what we're going to do is we're going to use a for each and we're going to loop through all the layers and we're just going to say l dot save and what the save will do is those just like we just did we're going to we're going to actually store everything in our tile layout dot row. After we do that, we are going to want to add in the IO name system IO input on input output namespace. And we want to create a serializer object. And we'll say this dot get type. And so we're gonna say we're using Streamwriter equals new stream writer and we'll pass in the file path and then we'll say xml dot serialize and we'll put in the writer in there and we'll put this object in there and that will serialize it correctly and sorry about that that was just my phone so now what we have to do is we just have to go to our form one dot cs and in formal.cs we have to create something called a save file dialog and if you've never seen one don't be alarmed and I just call the SFD for a save file, save file dialog you can name it whatever you like and we're gonna say sfd.filter and we want to set it that we, we filter it to load in XML files so we'll say .xml and we'll put a horizontal line and a star dot xml now if you want to know really what that does you can search up a tutorial on c sharp i'm not going to go in depth into that i expect that you would at least know some basics of c sharp and we're going to say sfd dot title and we're going to set the title to save map and so what we're going to do is we're going to say that if sfd dot show dialog equals to that the dialog result okay so if they've selected a file or if they've saved the file name they written down a file name and a directory they want to save it to and they click okay this is what's going to happen when they click okay so what we want to do is we'll just make a call to editor one dot and sorry about this but we have to go back to our editor.cs and our editor.cs we are going to create a, a map property and we're going to say return our map instance simple enough so in formal.cs we'll say editor one dot map dot um dot save sorry and the file path is going to be sfd dot file name 
and voila all this is gonna do is when we click save we're gonna save it we're gonna select it and when we click OK we're gonna pass a file name and the directory it's gonna pass a file path to our map and our map is going to um, put all the necessary changes we need to do to our layer and then it's going to call the serializer to serialize it into an XML file so now let's run this and hopefully everything is alright and uh, it is not all right. So I'm pretty sure it's in our designer code. And let's just check this out. Yeah, and it has my tile display. But so if you guys are getting an error about a tile display or something, just go to your designer.cs code. And that's why I told you to do the default constructor. It replaces it with the default constructor. So what we want to do is just pass in the editor like so. Rebuild, run it, and so you get uh, the same program you had before. And um, before I even uh, before I even do anything with this file, what I want to do is I want to uh, let's see. I want to show you the map at first. And uh, sure, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why I can't. Oh, maybe it's because it's in use. Okay. Um, not sure why, but I just want to show you guys uh, that um, that the file is indeed going to be changing. So, um, ju but just to show you, so this is tile zero, um, this is tile zero two, so zero one two, uh, no, it's tile two zero, sorry. And um, so I'm just going to add something along the edges. And we have an exception thrown. And it says the index is out of range, so that means this wasn't working properly. This is an unexpected error. Um, so let's see how to fix this. Uh, so it's saying J is negative one. I'm thinking it's because I might have accidentally went off screen. Uh, let me just test this out again. Yeah, it's because I went off screen, so we're gonna have to prevent that in the in a, another tutorial. Um, and yeah, so if, if I forget to do that, remind me to do that. It should be an easy fix, but uh, yeah, just remind me to do that. So we're gonna click start, and we're going to just add in um, something along the edges, and we're just gonna click file and save map. So it's going to show us this and we want to um, in our load we're just going to say map 2 and we'll say map 2 and that's it so now let's check this out and we see oh sorry so if we can check right here where's our map so we did something wrong because our map is just a bunch of X's right there and I know exactly why that happened so we're setting this equal to a value in our layer.cs we're just setting it equal to a value when we should be saying plus equals so let's ch uh, change that from equals to plus equals run this again and um, this tile right here so we're going to use the same tile file save map we'll overwrite that we'll click yes and we'll open up notepad plus plus reload it and voila we've got our tile map here but as our tile layout here so this is for the second layer the second layer wasn't altered but for the top layer as you can see tile four zero is added and then when you load this, if you want to test this out, if you think I'm lying or not, you can try loading this into your game. And when you load this into your game, you should have your edited map in your game. So that's it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. And bye for now.